In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make these two proximity prompt doors. I already made a video that's pretty detailed on proximity prompts, so if you wanna know everything there is to know about proximity prompts, be sure to check that one out. But a lot of people asked to see a video on doors specifically, so here it is. If you wanna see me make anything else, be sure to let me know in the comments, and I'll be looking through them to see whatever has the most upvotes, and I'll definitely make a video on it. Now, both of these doors have pretty much the exact same script. So because of that, we're going to start with the simple door so you understand the concept of what we're doing. So the first thing you want to do is go to the model tab and insert a part, then resize it however you want. You can do that with control three. And I won't spend too much time on that though, since this is a video, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can spend a little bit more time on it. Then I'm going to copy and paste this, make the hinge. And then after this, I'm going to rename the parts. I'll rename this one to door. I'll rename the other one to hinge. After that, I wanna make sure I anchor the hinge, only the hinge, so the hinge is anchored. I'll go to create a weld up here and model, click on weld, click on the door and then the hinge and they're welded together. So this will keep the door lined up with the hinge itself or to the same location relative to the hinge. And then after that, I'm going to actually recolor the door so we can see the difference between the two. And after this, what we want to do is click both of them or group them together. And then I'll rename this in the explore example part or example door rather. And then I'm going to insert a proximity prompt inside of the door. And then I'm going to insert a script inside of the door model. So you can see the setup that we have right here in the example door. So you can copy this. If you don't, the weld constraint, you'll see again down here, I have part zero is door and part one is hinge. All right, so going back to the part we have or the model, I'm actually gonna do one more thing. I click the model and then you can, as you can see, we going to go to the hinge. I have the hinge selected. I'll do control D, which will duplicate the part in place. So we have two parts right here. I'm going to rename this other hinge that we just duplicated. Make sure you have the, the second one and rename it to just decide. Make sure you click on welch constraint and see that you still have the door and the hinge as part zero and one. After that, open up the script and we can start scripting our actual door script. So delete the print hello world. We don't need that. First thing that we wanna do is get the tween service so that we can have a smooth animation for opening the door. Do local tween service equals game colon get service tween service. Now we want to get a reference to all the different parts of our door in the prompt. So we'll do local door equals script parent dot door. And you can look over here again to verify what you're doing. So the parent of the script is example door. And then after that, we're getting this door part itself. Uh, let's get the hinge. So hinge equals script dot parent dot hinge. And now we want to do local prompt equals door dot proximity prompt. Now, what we're going to do is create some goals for our tweens. So we'll type local goal open equals, and then the brackets right here, goal open dot C frame equals hinge dot C frame times C frame dot angles. And then we'll do zero comma math dot rad 90 and then comma zero. So what this does right here is we're getting the current hinge C-frame. So we're getting the C-frame of this gray part right here and we're multiplying it by C-frame dot angles. And then this will actually rotate it 90 degrees. So that's what this is, 90 degrees converted to radians. And I'll make a video on both the tween service and C-frames in more detail. Um, but it's kind of hard to explain all of this in just this video, but know for now that this will keep the current location of the hinge and just rotate it by 90 degrees. After this, we're going to create a close animation or the, the close goal rather. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this. I'll change open to close and then same down here. But this time what we want to do is change this back to zero and then we're going to create two tweens, but before we do that, we'll type local tween info equals tween info dot new one, which will make the tween take one second. 
or the, the change of the door, the opening and closing of the door rather, it will take one second. We'll create, create the open tween. So tween open equals tween service, colon create. And then we give the arguments for the create function to be the part that we want to tween. So we're going to tween the hinge or uh, basically rotate the hinge by 90 degrees. And we want to give it the tween info uh, that corrected on accident. So let me try that one more time. We'll do tween info, but lowercase like that. And then after that, we want to pass the goal itself. So the open goal for the tween for opening. And next out of this, we're going to do basically the same thing. So I'll copy paste again. I'll change open to close. And I'll change goal close to goal or goal open to goal close rather. Now let's create the trigger or connect to the triggered event of the proximity prompt. So we'll do prompt dot triggered colon connect. Then the function right here, we're going to create a function. So what this does is one of the proximity prompt is triggered. This function will be called and what we want to do is actually see if the door's open. If the door's open, then we want to close it and then vice versa. So one thing that we forgot to do is back here on our door in the proximity prompt, we're going to change the action text right here in the properties. If you don't have properties, go to view, click properties. We're going to change the action text to open. We're doing open because the door is currently closed. So we want to prompt the user to open the door. And we're actually going to use that to see in the script out here, if the door is closed or open. So we'll do if prompt dot action text is equal to close, then we will open it. So we'll do between close colon play. So we'll do a play animation to open the door. And we're going to change the prompt action text equal to open. And now in the other case, else if, actually we can just do an else, uh, assuming we're just going to have these two states. So we'll do tween open, and then play that one in the other case. If action text, it says to close a door, that means the door should be open because you'll be prompted to close it if it's open. Actually, I just realized I have a typo here as well. Um, and then we'll close it. Then we'll do the other animation here and then change the text as well. So we'll do prompt dot action text text equals close and that should be it so we'll hop in the game and see how this works as you can see it is working but i did forget to set the transparency of our hinge to one so if you don't want to see the rotating part like that we can set the transparency to one so to do that go to your example door click the hinge part go to transparency and set that to one and after that it should look like this uh, let me select something else actually, so you don't see that. I'll select the, the door. So now as you can see, as it rotates, you don't see the rotating hinge. Now, you actually don't really need the side part. You could just leave that, but I think it looks a little bit better if you do have a side part like that and the hinge is transparent. Now that we have this terrible looking door, we're going to make a door that looks a little bit better and it's fairly easy actually. Go to toolbox, go to working door, so Roblox endorsed model, insert that, and I'll show you how to make this one work just as the other one. I'm gonna rotate it to keep the hinge on the left side just like the other ones. You don't really need to do that though. Just make sure you're selecting the correct side for the hinge when we're doing this part next. Delete two false hinges. Go to the part with uh, some attachments and constraints. You can delete those. And then go to the hinge side. So it's right here. Look where the doorknob is. It's the opposite side of that. And then to control D on that part, rename that part to hinge, just as we did in the other one, set the transparency to one. And then after that, we're going to create a weld, go to model, do create, weld, and then you should be creating a weld from this part since it was selected. Select the middle part. And if you look in the door frame, inside of hinge, there's a weld constraint. It should say part zero is hinge, part one is visual if you've been following along correctly. If not, you can correct it by clicking that part just like this or, click, or clicking them in the Explorer, which is probably a little bit easier to do and more accurate. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is insert the proximity prompt inside of 
the base and next after that insert a script inside of the door model itself now delete the hello world go to the other script that we just created copy it paste it and we're almost done actually so i just realized this door variable is doing nothing really i don't know why i created that before um, so the hinge look where this hinges in relation to the script so we'll do script.parent dot door frame dot hinge the prompt is going to be the same way as the script dot parent dot base dot proximity prompt and now if we run the game you can see that it works so i'm all the way over at the new door that we just created to e to open e to close and just like that it is up and running as always thank you so much for watching comment your video ideas down below like the video if it helped you out and subscribe for more in the future